Hey guys, Scott here again uh, with a new beer dissection video. Um, again, depending on when you're watching this, uh, you know, a few times through my playlist under beer dissection or what is style, um, I had ordered a six pack of Crowlers from one of my favorite breweries, um, especially up in the Adirondacks at Lake Placid Pub and Brewery, as well as Big Slide. I've done that a few months ago and just recently I, I did it again. So I've been putting together some videos. So depending on uh, when you're watching this, you uh, if you find that brewery interesting, um, take a look for it. But what I have today is from Big Slide um, Brewery called Funky Bramble. Okay. Um, this time I've been trying to order beers from them um, that are maybe a little bit out of the norm or maybe things I don't necessarily order all the time other than maybe when I was up there last uh Again, they're in Lake Placid, New York, in the Adirondacks, northern New York, North Country region. Um, that, you know, I had a hot pepper beer. I, I bought um, this funky bramble, things like that that are a little bit different. Um, but there's Lake Placid Pub and Brewery, which is kind of more in the town of Lake Placid, right off of Main Street, I, I believe on Mirror Lake Drive. And then about a couple of miles down the road, their sister brewery, Big Slide, which, which this one's out of. But they're all kind of the same. It's the same owners. Um, and they're going to be opening one up in Saranac at the fall, I believe, of 2023. I'm filming this in mid-March, mid to late March of 2023. Um, so again, you know, same owners. So one, one of the two breweries I would definitely check out at, at one point. So what this beer is, is Funky Bramble, okay, which ca caught my attention because I do love Belgian beers. It's their kind of a, it's a, it's an amber ale, according to, the, to their website and their menu, but they're using Belgian yeast. Now, what would you expect with Belgian yeast? You'll get a lot of esters, maybe peppery phenols, just like if you had gotten a, a Duval or um, a triple, like a West Mala, uh, uh, West Vlederlin Trappist beer. Um, so they use that um, yeast first. So it probably produces, you know, probably more highly attenuated amber ale, <clears throat> again with those peppery phenols but then what they put in let me just get the exact number down it's 84 pounds i don't know what barrel system they have up there but that's a lot of blackberry puree that they put in the beer probably in a secondary fermenter um i don't know that for a fact but that's what a lot of times they do that they let it sit on the puree uh which kind of gives it some fruit fruitiness as well as the blackberry and then, then they put in a mixed culture what that means is a lot of these mixed cultures um, have bretomyces. Now, bretomyces will have uh, give you kind of a barnyard, horse blanket. Some people perceive it like a cherry pie kind of flavor. I know some of those things don't sound that uh, refreshing, but um, it, it actually is quite pleasant, especially if you have it in a beer called, called Orval, which is a Trappist beer. I haven't done a video on that one yet, even though I've, I've probably spoken about it. You know, sometimes Flanders Red will have it in there a little bit too. Um, they also use Pediococcus as well as Lactobacillus. So that's kind of giving you that sour character. So it's going to produce lactic acid. Pediococcus will produce lactic acid, but also produce some diacetyl. Diacetyl is usually not wanted in beer. Um, it's produced by the yeast and I'm not going to go into it, but it, it kind of gives you this filmy, um, buttery, uh, popcorn butter from like the movie theater character to beer, which is usually not desirable other than it's tolerated well in Czech premium pale lager. Some English varieties of beer will have a little bit of diacetyl. When it gets to a high level, it's not that high. In a beer like this, um, if they're using Brettomyces, um, the Brettomyces will eat some of the diacetyl. So it's probably keeping it kind of at bay. So it's probably not going to be overpowering. Um, but again, I'm, what I'm expecting is that year that it's sitting with this mixed culture, um, it's producing some uh, lactic character, which is kind of that sour tart. So I'm, I'm assuming that if you like sour beers, this is going to have some of that character. And again, that barnyard horse blanket kind of character. Um, which again, I know it's not sounding very pleasant as I'm explaining that to you, but um, I'm expecting this is going to probably brew very well. As I've said in a few videos with Lake Placid Pub and Brewery and Big Slide, is even if you don't like 
certain styles of beer, they probably are producing them very well and making a very, you know, a perfect style of beer. You just may not particularly like that. So with this one, I'm expecting that if you don't like some sours or things like that, that's what I'm anticipating going in. Sometimes I like to talk about like what I'm expecting and then when I open up the can, we'll see if, you know, what my expectations are, if they meet or exceed them. Um, so again, this is called the Funky Bramble. Let me see if there's any other notes on it. Um, it's at 6.4% alcohol, about 10 IBUs. So the IBUs, remember, international bitterness units. 10 is pretty much there um, for a lot of Belgian styles, like Lambics, um, which I should have mentioned too. With some of the Lambic beers, even though it's spontaneously fermented with the flora, sometimes if it's put in different casks and things like that, it'll take on the wood character. It will have little bugs and critters, you know, like the Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, um, as well as the Brettomyces. Um, so if you ever hear a beer as a Brett beer, that's what that is. Um, so, you know, many times, like I said, Lactobacillus, Pediococcus. Pediococcus, a lot of times, are draft line infections. Um, they'll be in there. That's what will give that character, which is, again, not desirable. Uh, those things I just mentioned, most of the time, they're not desirable uh, factors. But nowadays, with the rise in sour beers, Lactobacillus, is used a lot, again, usually kettle soured, because most of the sellers uh, at these breweries do not want any of these organisms usually floating around free. But now since people are getting, getting into those beers, that's what we're expecting. Um, so again, it's, they're saying it's an amber ale with the Belgian yeast first, and then stuck in with these 84 pounds of blackberry puree, which I'm sure it's gonna have that blackberry um, juice character and sweetened a little bit from that. Um, and then put in with this mixed culture, Brettomyces, Pediococcus, and Lactobacillus. So kind of that sour character, and it's aged for about a year. Um, I'm actually surprised I was able to get a, a crowler of this. Some of these specialty beers, sometimes you can't get, um, you know, shipped to you from the, the brewery. Um, so, okay, that's pretty much it. So with something like this, I'm definitely gonna go with a tulip. So even though hop character is not gonna be very important in this beer, um, you know, for, for a Belgian style beer, I'd go with a tulip or a higher sized, uh, higher end tulip that's, uh, when I mean higher end, more height to it. Um, or maybe even a goblet, you know, if you have it laying around or a chalice, that would be fine too. Um, so anyway, let's crack this bad boy open. Um, again, big slide, funky bramble. So the funk character is probably coming from the Bretomyces, okay? If you never had it, try Orval. Um, it's a Trappist beer. It's found in some, you know, usual high-end, um, uh, sorry, I'm just having a little issue here trying to get my finger underneath the cap. Um, you know, you can kind of get a little taste of what Bretomyces is, but it's actually quite pleasant. And uh, even Lactobacillus and Pediococcus, when used properly here, um, will be usually more pleasant than some of those negative uh, words that sounded like when I talk about sour, you know, barnyard, horse blanket, you know, uh, those things don't usually sound too good. Or popcorn butter, okay? So let's check this bad boy out, pour it in. Okay. All right, so. All right, so what do we got here? Looks like it's very highly carbonated, which I didn't mention. If you watch any of my uh, Belgian style beer reviews, I talk about how a lot of Belgian style beers are a lot more highly carbonated um, and effervescent, like Duval and things like that. Um, so this one I could see is bursting out. We kind of got this a little murky, you know, kind of from the blackberries is probably giving a little bit of a tinge of a um, cross between the amber and then the, and the purple from the blackberries or the blue from the blackberries, any way you want to look at it. It kind of is giving us this, you know, medium light to light brown kind of hue to it. Um, I could see the carbonation jumping out. Now, it doesn't look like it's got much head on here, um, maybe from the fruit and things like that, but um, sometimes you may suppress the head sometimes um, in the beer. It probably has more to do with the, yeah, like I say, with the fruit. Um, so anyway, uh, let's take a sniff of the aroma. Oh yeah, so, I mean, I'm definitely getting that citrusy, estery character and probably coming from the blackberries. 
slight phenolic, um, probably from the Belgian yeast, little slight pepper, but definitely more estery and fruity. Seems to dominate there. But very nice. I mean, it's what I would expect when you're putting 84 pounds of uh, blackberry uh, puree uh, in a secondary fermenter with your beer. And again, that's what I think what's giving you the color. So don't be scared off by the color. That's just probably from the fruit and, you know, the puree and the pithy matter from there. The seeds and things like that kind of change the color a little bit. But that's what I would expect um, from a beer brewed in this, in this manner. Okay, but we get, again, a little bit, you know, I'm expecting more on the palate. I'm going to get a little bit more of the uh, bread and myases character to it, but you kind of get a little bit of that dank um, barnyard kind of aroma to it. But it's definitely dominating with the esters and the fruit. But anyway, guys, let's cheers. Let me take a swig of this. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so, very high. Let me talk about the carbonation. Very highly carbonated, as I expected. And you would expect that with a Belgian style beer. Um, so, it kind of definitely hits you on the front end of the palate with that. Um, low bitterness, which you expect, is only 10 IBUs. Um, kind of medium. You know, it's very effervescent with the carbonation, but it still kind of has that kind of medium mouthfeel. Um, to it probably with all the fruity nature in there um, there is that sour character from the lactobacillus and the pediococcus right up front usually the tartness from sour or acidity usually will hit your taste buds first and then the bitterness comes in later uh, from like the hops and everything so this definitely is hitting you with the sour character so yeah you're definitely getting singed up front with this, the acidity from the lactobacillus. Um, you know, you do get that estery fruit character. Um, I'm not getting too many phenols on, on, the, on the palate um, like I would if I was drinking a traditional Belgian beer. Um, but definitely the acidity is ruling here uh, from the lactobacillus. So if you like sours, this may be right up your alley. Um, you know, the esters, you know, also that, remember I said with bread and sometimes people will describe it like cherry pie flavor. Um, if you have Orval, sometimes you'll have that a little bit. Um, I'm getting that here and it complements it well because there is blackberries with it. Um, but again, you're still getting that tart um, character from, you know, the pediococcus and the lacto. Um, let me just get in another swig here. Um, but it's nice. I mean, it's not, it's not a necessarily a style I always gravitate to like sours, but it's very quick, crisp, kind of, you know, sharp bite because of the sourness. Um, it's like drinking a Berliner Weiss, um, if you ever have Berliner Weiss, it's, it's usually kettle sour too these days. Um, it's like a, a lemony, you know, you kind of get lemon on this too, like a, that kind of tartness to it. So it's kind of like a, a blackberry Berliner Weiss, pretty, pretty much with Brennamiasis. So um, that's kind of like if you get that kind of tartness from Berliner Weiss, that's what you, you expect here a little bit. Um, maybe not as, maybe similar uh, tartness to like a Gosa. Um, but again, the cherry character, the acidity definitely dominates, um, medium mouth feel, um, a little bit of that, that, you know, it's that, you know, it is called funky bramble, that funk that you get from bread and myces. And that's probably why they call it funky bramble is that, um, you know, usually when they say, you know, bread and mice, it kind of gives that funk. And that's when I was explaining that barnyard, horse blanket type of character. Um, pretty much, you know, saddle, like, you know, it's just, it's just kind of that funky, that's the best way of explaining that funky, you know, earthy um, 
you know, character with it. So again, this is kind of along those lines of that. But, you know, I don't get, you know, you get the fruitiness from the blackberry, you know, the cherry pie kind of thing from the bread of my seeds that you'll get sometimes on the palate. But definitely the acidity is dominating here um, on the front end, um, especially that even if I might let in the aftertaste go. Um, I kind of get a little bit more, again, the, just the funk in, the, in you know, the, the barnyard character from it. Um, but very good. Uh, it's not, again, probably a beer that I will, you know, buy many crowlers of because it's just not the style of beer because I'm not a big sour um, beer. I think I did a one from, from Bend, Oregon, a, a apricot sour. And that, very good. And this is well made. This is, I think they nailed it as far as um, Big Slide for what they were trying to achieve with the sourness of the Pediococcus and Lactobacillus. They got the fruit and esters in there. Um, a little phenolic more. I got a little more phenols on the nose than I do on the on the palate. Um, and that funk. I mean, so again, the funky bramble. So if you if you like, you know, Orval, um, you know, a lot of uh, these farmyard kind of beers with mixed cultures and things like that, this is right up your alley. So, I mean, as far as being well being made well, I would say B plus A minus. Um, I've never uh, brewed a style this beer, so it's hard for me to criticize uh, this particular one. Um, but it, you can see it is it does have that amber hue to it. Um, and again, with the 84 pounds of blackberry puree, you can see it kind of gives you that that brownish tinge um, that you would have from there. Um, you know, but again, probably not a style. If I was uh, when I go back to visit, which we do usually go many years. Um, for many years, we've been going up there. Um, maybe I'll try a sampler of it again, um, but I'm not a, again, I'm not a big sour guy, so I don't know if I'd buy a whole crowler of it, but if sours are for you, this is definitely something that you should, uh, try it out. Okay. All right, guys. So big slide brewery. I probably had it popping over my shoulders a few times, um, called funky bramble. Hope you learned a little bit about what lactobacillus, um, pediococcus and bretomyces does for beer if you're at your local microbrewery um, and you see those things. Um, again, lactobacillus and pediococcus, the acidity, lactic acid, of course, um, from that and the bretomyces kind of gives you this funky barnyard horse blanket kind of character, at least how it's usually described in the learnings of uh, Cicerone and things like that and just beer culture. Um, so anyway, guys, till the next one, this beer dissection, Funky Bramble from Big Sly Brewery in Lake Placid, Adirondacks, New York. Um, till next time, um, hope you found that informative. Take care of yourself.